sometimes you get recommendations from TikTok and you'll go visit it and you'll realize like people don't have good taste. But Naps. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Vlogmas. My boyfriend and I just got to Houston and we just checked into our hotel. So let me give y'all a little room tour. So here is the door. When you walk in, you get to the bathroom. Turn on the lights. Boom. Cute little mirror. Nice shower. Oh, I hate a rain head shower, but whatever. Um, you yeah, have bathroom. I'm living alone. There's another little mirror here, and this is a closet, I assume. Yep. Some drawers, coffee, blah, blah, blah. TV, uh, the bed. And they even have a little, like, table here, which I think is really cute. And a little chair here. And finally, here is the view outside. I'm like a Marriott girly for sure. Um, and I love staying at Westin. This is a Westin and it is not disappointing. Like the lobby is really cute. The restaurant area is really cute. There's like an outdoor patio. Everything is just giving like clean and like upscale. We love to see it. So my boyfriend just went and returned like the luggage cart or whatever. Um, I need to take down my hair because I did these before I got on the plane so that when I got here I could take them down and be all cute or whatever. But we're probably going to figure out what our game plan is, we're probably going to get some food. So I'm going to check in with y'all later. Actually just kidding, I'm going to check in with y'all right now because I'm about to do my little food research that I do every time I go to a new city. I definitely consider myself a foodie, I love trying new things, especially when I travel. Um, if you watch one of my New Orleans vlogs, I talked about how much I love Eater. Like, I just feel like Eater does really great food journalism. So generally, like I look at TikTok, but, and I talked about this before, sometimes you get recommendations from TikTok and you'll go visit it and you'll realize like people don't have good taste. This is the thing. You want to get food recommendations from people that are foodies and food journalists you can typically rely on the fact that they are foodies um so that's why i like to rely on like actual food publications <music> trying twist out i have a whole tutorial on this on my page if you want to go check that out um but now i'm just gonna put my shoes on my jacket and we're gonna head out and get some dinner Good morning. Um, I just got ready. I'm gonna put my perfume on. This scent is really nice. Kayali Burning Cherry. Um, Fumi Monet actually put me onto this. And then I think Sephora sent me this in like a gift box, but I was gonna buy it full uh, full size regardless if they had sent it to me or not because she said it was bomb. And it is bomb. 
Okay, but last night we went to a restaurant. What was the restaurant called? Uh, Zin Chow. Zin Chow. Zin Chow. Zin Chow. Which is actually um, owned, and the head chef is Christine Ha, who I used to be obsessed with MasterChef, okay? And I remember watching the season of MasterChef that she was on, and it was a big deal that she won because she's actually blind. Um, and she is from the Houston area, and she has two restaurants here, so turned out that one, that that one was one of her restaurants and it was so good no misses every single thing there was delicious but anywho now we're about to go get some breakfast and hang out and walk around so i'm gonna take y'all along with me Hey y'all, we're back at the hotel. I'm just checking in with ya. It has been a long day. We were at the mall practically all day buying people Christmas gifts. Um, it was a lot of work and it was really freaking hot in the mall. It was also freezing cold outside. So we just spent all day shopping and then we had to stop at CVS because girl, I forgot to pack my Eco Style Gel and I can't live without my Eco Style Gel. Um, so I went and picked some of that up at CVS and then got some like little gift bags and wrapping paper and whatnot for all the gifts that we bought. And now, because it has been such a long day, we are gonna go to the bar in the hotel to wind down, bro, and then probably go get some dinner or something. But yeah, let's head out. Hey y'all, we just stopped back in the hotel room real quick just because um the menu at the bar, like we just got a beer down there but the menu for like the hotel restaurant was kind of boring so it just seems like a waste of money to like eat food at the hotel see that's where that show um white lotus had me fucked up because why were they eating hotel food every single day in italy but yeah, we're not gonna eat in the hotel we're gonna go find well we already found a restaurant that we're gonna go to and we're gonna go out and we're gonna spend our money wisely not eating bad hotel food checking in um dinner last night was super good i'm really liking the food scene in houston um i just got up and got ready and like made my hair into a little side part and now we're gonna go get some breakfast <laughs> Checking in, um, what did we do yesterday? Yesterday was a long day. 
I skated. Oh, yeah. Okay, so first we went to brunch at this. Well, no. I got breakfast because he ate before I woke up. So then we went to get breakfast. I got a little Vietnamese steak and eggs. That was cute. It was good. And then we went ice skating, which was fun. Um, I haven't ice skated since I was like 12. So it took a little minute to really, you know, adjust and figure it out. These kids. I was like holding onto the wall. You were great at putting them on. You knew oh, how to put them on. thanks. You just couldn't skate for shit. That's okay. It took me a minute. Like, I was holding onto the wall for, like, the first 15 minutes, and these kids literally came up to me, and they were like, do you know how to skate? I was like, obviously not. So. We well, asked you if you got kids first. Well, well, yeah, it was really cute. This little girl came up to me, and she was like, do you have kids? I was like, um, no. Interesting way to start a conversation. But then she asked me if I knew how to skate, and I told her that I was, like, scared. And then she showed me how to skate. And then after that, we got some tacos and drinks. And then later on that night, we went to pizza. I didn't film the pizza part, but the pizza was very good. Um, we love to see it. And now today, we're going to go ahead and go to brunch. And I'm going to take y'all along with me. Everybody. I got my Christmas PJs on. We're gonna go downstairs and get some breakfast before ooh, my eyes itch. We're gonna get some breakfast before we go get some Christmas dinner. Um yesterday was super fun. We got brunch at Lucille's. Lucille's was super good. Um what do we do? Let me just hang out. Watched this Christmas, which I had never seen before. And then had some oyster stew and I prepared some brown butter chocolate chip cookies for everybody. I made the dough yesterday so I'm gonna actually like bake them today and that's about it. So I'm gonna catch y'all later. So we just got back from eating. Um, breakfast was good. Now we need to like pack up all our stuff because we actually have to check out today. Um, we're gonna pack up our stuff, wrap up some gifts, get dressed and whatnot and then go get Christmas dinner. Finally, finally back home. I picked Lou up from his little dog hotel. Um, it's been a couple days since we got home, but I'm sure y'all have heard of all of the like crazy travel issues that have been going on. It was hectic to say the least. So our flight was scheduled to leave Christmas evening because my boyfriend had to work that like early morning so we had to get we had to leave christmas evening unfortunately so we spent the day with family and then went to the airport and we were assuming like christmas night like i understand people are probably traveling in the morning on christmas to like 
get to spend the day with their family but like christmas night i was assuming like the travel was going to be pretty light not going to be a whole lot of people in there immediately upon pulling up to the airport it was like crowds and crowds of people lines going all throughout the airport mind you i was in houston um thinking about this is like so frustrating but anyways the lines in particular were not at the check-in counter. They were at like the customer service counter. So we hadn't gotten any email or anything about our flight being delayed or there being an issue. We were on Southwest, which was like the main airline having all the problems. Um, people were in line for customer service, but it was because of issues from the storm. At least that's what people were saying at the airport. Um, they were dealing with issues that were related to flights being canceled because of the storms and they were going to like very specific cities. So like mainly in the Northeast, Chicago, places that had like storm problems. Now Jackson is literally like a 50 minute flight from Houston. There's no weather issues in Houston. There was no weather issues in Jackson. So we're thinking it's gonna be all good, whatever, whatever. Check-in was a breeze because there was no one at the check-in counter. We get to our gate. And that's where everything starts going downhill. I think our flight was for 640. And it was like instantly as we after we checked in, every few minutes it was like delay, 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 delay. We must have got there at like got to our gate at like 6 p.m. Um, you know, at first it got delayed to 8 o'clock, then 9 o'clock, then 10, 11. 12, one, two, bro. It, like there's no flights that are ever scheduled for 2 a.m. So once that shit got past 10, I was like, this flight is not going out. This flight is not going out. But they didn't officially cancel the flight. And that was the issue. If you just leave and the flight happens to take off, like that's on you because you already checked in. You have to wait for them to cancel your flight to then go talk to customer service and get everything resolved. I'm like, y'all delayed this shit to 1 a.m. You know damn well this shit is not gonna take off. You know damn well there's no pilots, there's no stewardesses, like everything, everyone in there, it came to light later on that the issue wasn't cancellations because of storms. Like yes, that was an issue, but that was like days ago that that was the problem. The issue was that there was no crew for any of the Southwest flights. And what was really frustrating is like y'all could have like, canceled this shit so early on so that people could like figure their shit out but we were sitting in the airport until two in the morning and at two in the morning they were like all right y'all we have no pilots we're gonna cancel this flight and it's like okay it's two in the morning now the customer service desk is closed there's no one at the desk there's no one there to help us like it was a hot ass mess so thankfully thankfully my boyfriend's family was still in Houston, so we could go back to the hotel and like stay with them. But if they were not there, like we would have just been stranded or had to like figure out hotels or whatever. But like literally everyone else in the airport is doing that. That's what makes it so stressful. Everyone else is having these flight issues. Everyone else is trying to figure out where to stay. Everyone else is thinking about getting a rental car. The prices for other airlines was exorbitant. The prices for the rental cars was exorbitant. Like it was a very stressful situation. <sighs> The next morning, um, right when we wake up, my boyfriend gets on the phone with Southwest. Their lines are like booked and busy, girl. Like it was like impossible to get through. But he was like, I'm just going to we're going to do whatever we need to do during the day. And I'm just going to stay on the line until maybe somebody picks up the phone. He was on the line for like three and a half hours before somebody was like, hey, how can we help you? Now, mind you, when we were at the airport the night before, all the customer service people were basically saying like there are not going to if your flight doesn't go out today there's not going to be any flights that you can get until the 30th or the 31st maybe so like new year's new year's eve and it's like that's like five six days from when we were trying to travel so that's really crazy that you're just expecting people to get accommodations and maybe you'll reimburse them and also like people have jobs like this is not something that people can factor into their like schedules so in my mind i'm thinking like we're not gonna get a flight what we're gonna have to do is like spend some crazy amount of money renting a car and driving back it's a 50 minute flight but it's a six and a half hour drive so you don't want to wait because he had to work like he had to call out of work obviously when we missed when our flight got canceled or whatever 
But then the next day, his job is still expecting him to come in. So we have to figure out something quick. Or like if we have to drive and we're taking so much time trying to get on the phone with customer service, like we're not going to make it on time. So it's like we need to figure this shit out ASAP. But finally, we get on the line with customer service and they tell us. And at this point, what time is it? It's like, I want to say noon or one. And they're like, we can get you on a flight today at 430. I think they said something like that. And we're like, okay, bet. In our minds, we're like, yeah, if this shit takes off, we're going to be lucky. Anyways, we get to the airport. When I tell you, every single flight. It wasn't even like, oh, we're going to delay until we figure it out. Every single flight in that Houston airport was canceled. Except ours, which was weird. I'm like, okay, because generally, like, Jackson is not prioritized because it's such a small city. Like, they're prioritizing trying to get people to larger cities or the flights that are, like, way more booked up um but anyways like it was really crazy because the only flight that did not get canceled that day was our flight oh and mind you girl like the day before um when our flight got canceled we checked bags so our bags were just floating around in the stratosphere we had no idea where they were they said that they were gonna get sent to jackson i don't understand how they could be sending bags anywhere when all the flights are getting canceled but miraculously our bags ended up on our flight so all we had to do was go and pick them up from the carousel it was stressful but it was not as bad as the experiences that some people were having like honestly if our flight did not get out, like we probably still would be in Houston right now. But anyways, girl, we're back now. It was stressful, but not as bad as that experience that I had when I went to LA. If you watch my LA vlog, I also had a really horrible travel experience with like delays and getting stuck in Phoenix and having to stay in like a hotel overnight by myself. That, like the Phoenix airport, like it was, girl this too much these travel problems like it's giving we need trains we need some high speed train rails in the united states girl because best believe i'll be on them i i am a train girly through and through anywho girl i'm probably gonna wrap up this vlog here it'll probably be my last vlogmas it is like obviously past christmas so technically vlogmas should be over but girl um i have like three more vlogmas vlogs to edit so if you get some vlogmas vlogs in january mind your business because they're gonna go up i didn't film all this to not edit them and post them thank y'all for watching and following along and i'll catch y'all later